Hey, Mr. Sams. Yep. Hey, uh, what, what are you doing? Um, playing with Velcro and zippers. You're doing what? I'm playing with Velcro and zippers. Ooh, look, a snap. What, why would you play with Velcro snaps and zippers? Because it's fun. Oh, no, and it bonds things together. These are ways of stick, sticking things together so I can stick things together. So you can stick snap. things together. I can stick things together with my Velcro or the zipper or whatever. Well, that's that kind of like bonding, isn't it? It is. These things bond together. So there's the, like a Velcro. you got the fuzz. And you, and you know what we're talking about today in class? Loops. Bonding. Bonding. Uh, you are just brilliant. I know. I it's know. Just, You're amazing. This is just, I, I, I just love this. You just, um, you must have small children at home. I do. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Okay. All right. So today, folks, we're going to talk about? Bonding. Bonding. Okay, Mr. Sams, here yeah, we are. Chemistry fun. Podcast 2.5. You and your bonding thing, your Velcro deal. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I, oh. I just can't stop. I, you're amazing, I tell you. The small children uh, must just keep you going. Yeah. But we're not about bonding. What, uh, what do bonds do? Uh, they stick atoms together. Yeah, so we've got like atoms. And do atoms really look like this? Not really. That's just the way we, we show them so we can kind of visually... Yeah, so kind of like this stick in between here. That stick is like a it bond. It represents a bond, but that's not what a bond is. Because actually like. they're kind of like connected together. Yeah. They kind of overlap. Their yeah. orbitals overlap. We'll learn more about that later. But the key thing is, is we're going to talk about the different varieties of bonds in chemistry. Yeah. All right, so let's start with ionic bond. Ionic, yeah, there's three types we're going to talk about. The first one is ionic, and in an ionic bond, we produce ions. And ions, as we know, have positive and negative charges. So in order for something to get a positive charge, it has to lose an electron. And for something to get a negative charge, it has to gain an electron. So when we build an ionic bond, we take two elements, and one of them loses the electron and gives it to the other one, so there's a transfer of electrons going on. So that's the key. An ionic bond happens when there's a transfer of an electron. And a transfer occurs from a metal atom to a non-metal atom. All right, so folks, if you're seeing this, we've got this arrow, kind of a funny looking mm -hmm. arrow right there. That is the transfer of this little dot. This dot right here is the electron. It isn't really an electron. It's a representation of an electron <laughs> as it moves from the Na sodium, which is a metal, to the chlorine. Another thing that's very important for you to write down is that an ionic bond is a bond between a metal, metal and a non-metal. To a non-metal. So take away ionic bonding, there's a transfer of electron, and it's between a metal and a non-metal. And Mr. Bergman is having pen trouble. Yeah, I'm having pen trouble. Okay, here's actually kind of a, a animation as you can see. The sodium, he's giving up his electron and and he became they connected. Let's right. kind of go back and watch that again, everybody. Right. So if you watch that again, the electron transfers energy is given off, then the two guys get connected. Now the reason they got connected there is because the sodium has a positive charge. Positive charge, just going to repeat I guess. And then the chloride has a negative, negative. charge. And they opposites attract. Opposites attract. So they attract each other. That's exactly Call that an right. electrostatic attraction. And then um, when they form, they form which actually called a crystalline lattice where we have the um, negative is the green and the positive is the purple and it's just an overlapping NaCl. Yep. So if this was sodium chloride, actually one thing that's interesting about this, when we say it forms a crystal lattice, is it's not like there's one sodium connected to one chloride. No, that's just the ratio. For every one sodium, there's one chloride. If this were calcium chloride, it'd be a two to one. So, for example, with sodium chloride, you yeah. might think of Na1000, Cl1000. Right. Or well, we always billions. reduce it to the lowest lowest whole number ratio. Right. Okay, well, um, so ionic bonds are bonds between a metal and a non-metal. Remember, yep. metals, we learned this earlier, metals are on this side of the, the stair line. step, and then these are the non-metals, okay? So bonds between metals and non-metals. So let's watch a short little video um, about ionic bonding. Well, here I am at the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs, and uh, I want to talk to you today about ionic bonding. Now, an ionic bond is a bond between a metal and a non-metal. I have to have brought with me um, an ionic compound. Um, salt. Salt. Salt is, is an ionic compound. Let me pour some in my hand. Salt, of course. You mean I eat chemicals when I eat salt? I know. So if you look right there, that's sodium chloride. Sodium bonded to chlorine. And when you bond the sodium to chlorine, you make a ionic bond. Another example of ionic bond in the backdrop over here, if Aaron turns, you'll see um, Pike's Peak. Pike's Peak is made up of Pike's Peak granite. Granite is a mixture of many chemicals, but all of them are ionic bonds. Metal bonded to non-metal. And that's an ionic bond. 
Well, now we've got a different kind of bonding. Covalent bonding. Co -valent now, this bonding. is sometimes called molecular bonding. Molecular? Can you see molecular, everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, molecular bonding. And it forms covalent compounds, which are also sometimes called molecular compounds. It's just ah. two different ways of talking about the same thing. Now, guys, the word covalent is actually good to understand. Co. Together. Together, like cohabitation or co cooperation. Cooperation or <laughs> Coca Cola. <laughs> no, I no. don't think so. No, okay. that comes from the coca plant, and that's a whole another. Oh, that's a whole another ball of wax. Yeah. Isn't it? All right. <laughs> yeah, I was in Peru one time, and yeah. they have coca plants. That's a whole another deal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Covalent means sharing co something. Valence. They share share valence. Valence electrons. Yeah. Ah, okay. Remember, they're going to share. Oh, maybe that tells us what covalent bondings yeah. are. It is sharing. I'm going to write this down. Sharing valence. V a l E N C valence electrons. There you go. So our picture right here, we have a hydrogen atom with his mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. electron, and what he does is he meets up with another hydrogen, hydrogen atom, atom with his with, one electron. With his one electron, and, and they, they share. share. That's nice of them. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Do you teach your kids to share? I do. That's good. Our son's good at it. The girls not so much. Well, yeah, yeah. They, they're they're, they're kind of small. They're still too young. It's yeah. Mine, mine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, both of them just learned the word. I have twin daughters, by the yes. way. In case you didn't know that. Yeah, mine, 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 mine. Yeah. So um, a bond between uh, a covalent bond is a bond between a. Actually, we should say this yeah. before. It is bond between a. Two nonmetals. Nonmetal non and a nonmetal. To a nonmetal. Right. So where would we find those on the? Those are to the right of the staircase. So here's my staircase right here. So it's going to bond between these guys and themselves. And, and what? And hydrogen. Yeah, but remember also there's a weird deal. Hydrogen yeah. is not a metal, so he kind of also can bond like that. So yeah. a classic example like water, H2O. Yep. Water is a nonmetal bonded to a nonmetal. H's and O's are both nonmetals, and they share their valence.